In the last few days, I've been reviewing dividend stocks. And the one on my list today, of course, is 3M, a multinational conglomerate. It was also a dividend aristocrat and I've been increasing their dividends for 63 consecutive years. So today I'm going to put them through my 18 point checklist to see how they perform in terms of the fundamentals, the momentum and the growth. And then I will also do a valuation of the company to see if I can get a 10% return on my investment excluding that dividend. So let's start off by checking out the stock. So as you can see in the last six months, this stock is down 17.74%. Zooming out to the last year, you'll see it's down 10.2% in the last five years, down 9%. And if we look at the maximum view, the stock has been performing really well. But as you can see in the last few years, it hasn't been doing that well at all. But of course, they do pay a really nice dividend of 3.65%. So now I'm going to put them through my 18 point checklist. And let's start off first with the stock overview. Now, of course, the ticker is MMM. They've got a market cap of 92.8 billion. Now the price 10 years ago was $56.64. Today it's trading at $162.41. The PE ratio is 15.93 and the net margins 16.75. The net equity 12.9 billion that puts the equity to market cap at 13.92 percent my benchmark is usually 10 percent they pay a dividend of 3.67 percent and the payout ratio is 57 percent of the total earnings now the dividend cost to the company is 3.4 billion the free cash flows 5.8 billion so they are left with free cash flows after the dividend of 2.4 billion so now let's go check out this dividend real quickly so as you can see, they do pay a really nice dividend of 3.65% and the dividend has also been stable in the last 10 years. It has also been increasing over the last 10 years. As you can see, the green line over here is the dividend and the blue line, of course, is the dividend yield. So just from a dividend aspect alone, this company is a really safe dividend stock. They have been increasing dividends for the last 63 years. And as you can see, this dividend is stable. So if you are looking for a dividend stock, who is stable, who has been increasing, which is also covered by the free cash flow, then well, this stock is definitely a good one. But now let's have a look at the key ratios real quickly. Now, as you can see, the debt to equity ratio is sitting at 120%. That is very, very high. My benchmark is usually 40% or less. So this is, of course, a warning sign to me, but we have to look a little bit deeper into that as well. Because obviously, interest rates are cheap and a lot of companies are obviously taking on debt and then paying low interest rates and then they get a higher return on their investment. As you can see, the return on invested capital sitting at 19.2%. So this is way more than the interest they'll be paying on the debt. But let's go check out the debt and see how the debt is covered by the operating cash flows. If we look at simply Wall Street over here, you will see that the debt is actually very well covered by the operating cash flows. It makes out 42.9% of the debt. The interest payments are also well covered by the earnings before interest and tax. So as you can see, this debt is not really a problem at the moment. We'll have to keep an eye on that though. The debt has been increasing slightly, but like I said, the return on invested capital is sitting at 19.2%. So it does make sense why they are doing it. Obviously, just taking advantage of the low interest rates. But now moving on, the free cash flow to debt 17%. The price to sales 2.72. Price to book 6.14. The five-year beta sitting at 0.96. The total shares held by the insiders sitting at 0.12. And the total shares held by the institutions 68.25%. The total percentage of shares that are shorted at the moment sitting at 1.58%. The short ratio, 4.27. Now the return on equity is looking really, really good, sitting at 42.28%. My benchmark is usually 10%. The return on assets also looking good, sitting at 10.15. And like I've explained as well, return on invested capital sitting at 19.21, which is really good, way above my benchmark of 10%. The current ratio is 1.71, which means I do have enough current assets to cover the current liabilities. The revenue compounded annual growth 1.92, so growing really slowly. The operating cash flows 4.73, free cash flows 4.74, and the earnings per share by 3.2 to seven compounded annual growth. So now I'm going to skip over the year on year data and head straight into my 18 point checklist. Now, of course, if you wanna see the year on year data, you can download this spreadsheet along with all the other spreadsheets we have done as well. You will also get access to all of our courses absolutely free on our website. So now let's go have a look at the 18 point checklist. So the PE ratio is between one and 25. Net margins greater than 10%. The assets are greater than the liabilities. The dividend cost is less than the free cash flow. The debt to equity ratio, unfortunately not less than 40%. The current ratio is greater than one. 
Shareholders have also not been diluted at all in the last three years, which is a really good thing. Now on the momentum side, as you can see, there hasn't been much momentum going on in the last three years. Looking at the growth, you will see the share price have definitely doubled in the last 10 years. The return on equity, the return on assets, and the return on invested capital greater than 10%. The earnings per share, however, have not been growing by more than 10% compounded annual growth over the last three years. So now this takes us over to the valuation and what I will be willing to pay for the company. Now these valuations are obviously figures that I make up. It's my assumptions on the stock and what I think will happen in the future. Of course, you can make up your own assumptions. And if you want to do that, you can download our intrinsic value spreadsheet absolutely free of charge as well on our website. But let's go and have a look at my assumptions on the stock. So currently the price to free cash flow is 15.87 and as you will notice this is based on the free cash flow. So I took three different scenarios, a low of 15, a median of 20 and a high of 25. This is based on the historical numbers for the company. So with a low of 15 you can expect 93, on a median 124 and then on the high 25 sitting at 155 which gives you a fair value today of $124. So now let's go check out the earnings per share model. So I used a discount rate of 10% and then once again three different growth rates, a bear, a median and a bull case. So on the bear case I used 3%, on the median 46 and on the bull case 5% with a fair target PE ratio of 15. This gives you a bear price of 146, a median of 154 and a bull case of 156 which gives you an average price today of 152 for 10% return on your investment. Now of course this does exclude the dividend and this is obviously based on my own assumptions on the stock as well. So let's go check out the verdict and see where I stand on 3M. So on the fundamentals, as you can see, it's looking really good, sitting at 86%. On the momentum, though, sitting at zero. On the growth, sitting at 80%. So on the growth and fundamentals, it's looking really good. Now the analyst 12-month target is 189. And if we head over to the analyst breakdown, you will see that they are rating it a hold, rating it three out of five. Three giving it a strong buy, one giving it a buy, 12 giving it a hold, three a sell, and then two a strong sell. As you can see, they are predicting an average price target of 188 over the next 12 months with a high of 254 and a low of 155. Heading back to my sheet, you will see that my price target for a 10% return on my investment is sitting at 152, which means that it's a potential loss of $9.99 or a projected net margin of negative 6.15. So I am pretty much neutral on 3M at this moment. So it is a great dividend stock. They do have really good fundamentals and growth on their side. They also do have a really good competitive advantage. However, for me to get a 10% return on my investment over and above the dividend that they are paying at the moment, I just don't see how I will be getting it at the current price. But like I said, for a dividend stock, if you want to buy it just for the dividend, then it's a great stock to have in your portfolio. They have a really good dividend, well covered by the free cash flow. The dividend is stable and it has also been increasing over the last 10 years. However, for me personally, I do feel that I won't be getting that 10% return on my investment over and above the dividend that I'm getting already. But like I said, a great dividend stock. Now, if you want to see stocks that we feel are undervalued, simply click on the link coming up in this video right now.